What was actually before the Big Bang? One person who thinks he has found a conclusive answer to this question is the British star mathematician Roger Penrose. Already in the 1960s, the scientists put forward theories according to which our universe is subject to a constant cycle of birth, becoming, and passing away. However, Penrose, who is now over 90 years old, does not believe in the multiverse. In this video, we look at the proofs why our present universe can have developed only from a predecessor cosmos and why black holes prove the existence of aliens. The History of the Universe all explanations of our universe that you can find in textbooks start with the Big Bang. The Big Bang, from which our whole cosmos is supposed to have originated from only some initial singularity, was considered mathematically and physically proven for a long time. In short, our universe began like this. A tiny little point, in which all potential was present in indeterminate form, danced out of line and triggered by an initial impulse that we know of today as the Big Bang. Whether it was really loud and had banged may be doubted, because for sound transmission and noise in space, particles and finally also listeners are necessary. This first initial moment could also have happened in silence. What exactly had happened? In quantum physics, one assumes today that before the Big Bang, a quantum fluctuation existed in perfect balance. This corresponds also to what one calls the nothing in physics and mathematics. In this state, no measurable and observable matter exists. However, the nothing is not really nothing, but a potential from information and energy in a perfect rest state. Normally, in this quantum vacuum, particles appear, encounter others, neutralize each other, and disappear. No matter is formed, and no forces are triggered. But then some mysterious impulse provides for the fact that a particle pair does not hold each other in neutral state anymore. This moment is the beginning of creation. What was before in perfect balance and equilibrium becomes unstable and falls apart. Bang! All at once, the whole stored potential begins to unfold out of a mini point. The universe is born. Still, there is no matter, only a million degrees hot primeval soup from energy. So far, we know the story, but what tipped the scales for the initial moment? Where did the quantum vacuum come from? And what was before the birth of our universe? The Cyclic Universe According to Roger Penrose Penrose was already convinced at the beginning of his career that our cosmos did not simply come into being out of nothing. When Penrose received his doctorate in algebraic geometry from the University of Cambridge in 1957, the Big Bang Theory was about 30 years old in its basic outlines. The world of scientists had recognized that our known cosmos was probably drifting apart from an initial point. This could be observed with the help of the cosmic background radiation. These first electromagnetic signals of the young cosmos are on the way in the universe until today and can be observed with radio telescopes. What was for a long time a pure conjecture, and could never be scientifically proven exactly, became visible when the Wilkinson Microwave Anisotropy Probe created an image map of the cosmic background radiation shortly after the turn of the millennium. From 2001 to 2010, the probe was in orbit between the Earth, Moon, and Sun. The imaging produced an accurate map of the previously known cosmos and provided scientists with much new data about the structure and evolution of the universe. In 2010, Roger Penrose published a study in Circular Concentric Anomalies in this background radiation. The scientist was able to mathematically demonstrate that these anomalies can be considered evidence of activity before the Big Bang. Strictly speaking, these circular anomalies are supposed to be information casts of collisions of supermassive black holes. Penrose was finally able to fit the missing piece of the puzzle into his model 
of cyclic universes. Among experts, his theory was already known as Conformal Cyclic Cosmology, or CCC for short. Conformal Cyclic Cosmology posited a model that envisaged single universes succeeding each other in time. Penrose's model assumes only a single cosmos that comes into being, evolves, decays, and then is reborn in a new Big Bang. CCC cosmology does not prove that multiple universes coexist in parallel and does not include the multiverse. According to Penrose, a universe exists in phases and cycles. It expands starting from a singularity, continues to expand, and finally collapses under the pressure of its own gravitational forces. In physics, this final scenario is known as the Big Crunch. Towards the end of its existence, the expansion of the cosmos becomes slower and slower, the pressure due to mass increases, and finally the world of material phenomena collapses under its own weight. According to Penrose's model, at the end of the life cycle of a cosmos, supermassive black holes have sucked up all matter and decomposed it into their photon structure inside. The black giants have finally become so heavy that space-time collapses under their weight. The big contraction, or the big crunch, is only one of three end-time scenarios. The big freeze assumes that the universe will simply freeze at the end of its energy reserves. The third scenario is the big rip. After the universe has expanded and expanded, it will tear like a piece of fabric that has become old and inelastic. What essentially distinguishes the big freeze, the big rip, and the big crunch is the aftermath, the question of what happens to the cosmos after this endpoint. Here, of course, we feel quite rightly reminded of the question of our own being, end, and possible continuation in this world. In fact, it almost seems as if the theories of Roger Penrose went hand in hand with Far Eastern wisdom and religious beliefs according to which we are all subject to an eternal cycle of birth, life, death, and rebirth. What is valid for the human being and his soul can also be valid for stars and whole universes. Mathematically and experimentally physically, only the big crunch supplies the conditions for this model. After the collapse of the cosmos, it comes for a temporarily, and not more exactly, determinable phase to a state of the rest and the perfect equilibrium in which apparently nothing exists. Then, a new cosmos emerges from this quantum fluctuation carpet, or zero point, by the initial momentum. The Big Freeze provides no such conclusive explanation. If our universe freezes at the end of its days, mathematically and physically, a dead and motionless cosmos would remain forever. Unless some, as yet unknown, external forces intervene, that could awaken the universe from its slumber and breathe a new life into it. The Big Rip is similar. If the universe rips apart at the end of its days, cracks in the time-space fabric would create chaos and conditions that would make reordering difficult. This scenario does not lead so far mathematically to a conclusive continuation or to a new development. According to the Big Rip theory, the universe would lie like a car driven to scrap simply somewhere at the roadside and would rot there before itself. Penrose's Ideas About the Geometry of the Cosmos Roger Penrose is considered one of the best mathematicians and physicists in the world today, although his name is far less well known than that of the already deceased Stephen Hawking. Penrose and Hawking were scientific companions and published several papers together. Both men worked for years on the question of the compatibility of singularities with Einstein's equations of relativity. Singularities, as they occur before the Big Bang, or also in black holes, are mathematical assumptions until today, because nobody has measured them yet. The two mathematical geniuses could prove, however, the existence of singularity computationally several times. The formulas of the two are known today as the Penrose and Hawking Singularity Theorem. Penrose had another passion besides his connection to practical mathematics. An expert in geometry, 
He was concerned with shapes and developed, among other things, the ingenious Penrose Triangle, a shape that can be represented graphically but can never be constructed in reality. The impossible shape, also known as Tribar, was created in the 1950s and inspired, among others, the artist M.C. Escher with his famous impossible paintings Waterfall and Belvedere. For Penrose, the universe consists of geometric sequences and linear patterns, which, like the Tribar and the masterpieces of the artist Escher, allow certain tolerances for the impossible. Penrose calls a section or the lifetime of a cosmos an eon. All these cycles are connected by a structure. The seed for the new universe is already contained in the endpoint of the old one, and respectively the mathematical conditions of the dying cosmos don't allow any other future than the birth of a new universe. The information for the new universe is consequently contained in the old one, and according to Penrose, information of a past cosmos gets into the next one. Thus, he could prove, as with the example of the collapsing black holes, that in the cosmic background radiation of our universe, information about the nature of the predecessor cosmos is contained. So far, so good. However, the theories of Roger Penrose have a small hook. His calculations make sense only if the universe slows down towards the end of its lifetime. At the moment, our cosmos should be in the middle of its lifetime and there is no question of slowing down. Rather, the cosmos expands faster and faster. It's quite possible that this increase in speed will come to an end at some point, but we do not know that for sure at the moment. Black holes provide clues to aliens. Finally, we would like to introduce one still more absolutely exciting theory of Roger Penrose. The scientist is of the opinion that energy can be gained from black holes. That this is theoretically possible, Penrose could prove mathematically without problems. He admitted, however, that this can be accomplished practically only by very far advanced civilizations. If such power plants existed somewhere out there in the cosmos, we could theoretically detect them from Earth through tiny anomalies at the event horizon of black holes. However, such a proof would not mean first contact with an extraterrestrial civilization by far. On the contrary, actually, such a discovery would also hold a certain sadness because we would never be able to make contact with these beings at the present state of the art. The next black hole is 1,000 light years away from the Earth, and until a signal would arrive at this or an even more distant black hole, mankind would perhaps already have disappeared from the planet. Now, as always, we want to know what you think about the Roger Penrose cosmological model. Can you imagine that one cosmos exists after the other? And how do you feel about alien power plants at black holes? Let us know and share your thoughts with us in the comments. We're glad you joined us today. We'll see you next time at Simply Space.